Well, hello there, my fellow rushers. How are you doing today? King Rex here. Today we're continuing on with another challenge in Legends of Kingdom Rush. This time we're gonna try to do something easier, or maybe it's harder, I don't know. We'll find out. But basically, I wanna see if I can beat the game with only area damage. Now, you may be thinking, well, there's a lot of area damage, how are you gonna specify it? Well, it's pretty simple. I basically selected heroes slash uh, champions or whatever, whatever you wanna call them. The po I select party members that only have uh, the ability to, to hit more than two enemies with their basic attacks. And funny enough, there's exactly three of them. We have Brave Bark, his basic attack can hit all the way up to three enemies, so he classifies. We also have uh, the Sasquatch, because he also deals uh, he also deals splash damage. And we got the Bombardier, because let me look at that. Dealing damage to all enemies within a one hex radius. She, she deals area damage, That's, that should have been obvious. But yeah, these are the three uh, party members that we're allowed to use, no recruits allowed. And we're playing on normal, because obviously, well, on what difficulty are we gonna play otherwise? And we're gonna get through everything, every adventure. So, without any further ado, let's just go right through it. Hmm, alright, starting off with the first adventure. Can we beat the first adventure? <laughs> of course we can, it's a joke. The first adventure is always a joke, no matter the challenge. You can you can probably beat it with the worst party in the game. Now, I'm not sure what the worst party in the game is, but if I have to make an assumption, it's probably Bruxa, the Sorceress, and the Sasquatch. I'm pretty sure that's like the worst combination that you can get. And yeah, before anyone starts saying that, that Bruxa is actually good, I know. I know that she is not completely trash. She still has some good stuff going for her. The problem is that she needs to get all the way up to level 3 in order for her to start being good. Her level 1 is pretty bad, her, her level 2 just doesn't doesn't bring enough to the table to the, to make it worth. I don't know, Brusa just... She, she, that, I don't know how to put it, let's just say that she has all of her power budget on level, at level 3. And if you don't get her up to level 3 pronto, well, you're not gonna get a lot of uh, help out of her. She's gonna be just kinda there. So yeah, that's why I think Bruxa will be probably the worst legend to pick. I mean, maybe Rexon, but I think Rexon is much better than you think. He's just underrated. He's very, very strong, and most importantly, he's very unique. But anyway, that's uh, besides the point. What do we have here? How are we doing? Well, we're doing alright-ish, I guess. I mean, it's not looking great, but at the same time, we're pushing through. That's what, something that I've noticed. The early game is very, very bad. Like, with this party, it, it gets better as the game progresses, but in the early game, oh my god, it's just so bad. It's really bad. I mean, at least Braveheart is fine, you know, 4 damage to the main target, that's, that's not bad. And the bra and Branch Bow deals do 6, so at least Braveheart is kinda decent in the early game, but he's not quite the best. And something that you're gonna be see me doing is uh, leveling up the Bombardier first, pretty much every time. <laughs> Because she needs that uh, upgrade, she definitely needs it. Because if she, if because her damage is just tr really bad, like two damage in the, at level one, she can't kill anything. She can't even kill a goblin if she wants to. She can't even kill a shaman. These are like the weakest enemies in the game. Like bruh, how, like how? But now that she is on uh, level two, at least she deals four physical damage, and four physical damage is pretty darn solid. I would say that. She, the woman there is kind of like a the zapper. She scales. She, she, she's a scaling champion. She's she's very bad in the early game. Late game, she is really good. All right, maybe not maybe not like the zapper. The zapper has somewhat of a decent early game. I mean, he does have one of the best basic attacks in the game. I mean, four four magic damage with a range of four. That's pretty good. That's a very very efficient attack. And with the lock and load, you can snipe someone from six hexes away, which is very big. That's more than Olok can can. That's that's b bigger range than Olok at level three. So there's that. It's a little bit of a something something. But yeah, we're doing just fine for now. So far, nobody has died, which is good. But trust me, some people are gonna be dying soon, especially the Sasquatch. I mean, come on, he's the Sasquatch. He's uh, he has. I don't even know what he's supposed to be. I mean, yeah, we know he's supposed to be a tank, but. He just doesn't fit in that role. He's kind of like a something else, but I'm not sure what exactly. Alright, now here we're in a bit of a trouble because you can see we have a lot of wolves. 
And wolves suck. Alright? We hate wolves. Because we have too many units. And, as you know, wolves have a 25% chance. Or, or was it 30? I don't know. I think it was 25% chance to, to dodge melee attacks. And that's kind of bad. The good thing is that the wolves are grouped up. And you know what that means? Boop. Satisfaction. There we go. AoE damage. Yeah. That's one of the good things about this uh, comp, at least. If we have a lot of low tier enemies piled up, they're gonna die. They're gonna die in one attack, which is pretty good. Now, unfortunately, Bravark is bleeding. Huh, psych, he isn't, because Bravark is a tree, he's immune to bleeding. Which is kind of weird, because uh, the Trunk, who is another tree-based enemy from uh, this game, he can bleed, but Bravark doesn't. Why? I don't know. It's just the way it is. I guess, I guess it's, I guess it makes sense, but also it doesn't. But at the same time, it would be stupid if Bravark didn't take took uh, bleeding damage, because that way you can really make a use out of the um, out of the brambles, because you know one of his one of his abilities allows him to summon three brambles, and if you if you walk into one of them, you you're gonna become rooted, but you're also gonna start bleeding. But because he's immune to it, you can just walk into it. Become rooted, gets be, got gets the extra healing and the extra stuff on his attacks, and just kills everything. Because that's the point of Bravark. Root him and watch the action happen. Speaking of action, let's see how are we gonna do? How are we gonna do up in here? Hmm. Yeah, so far it seems to be doing fine. Time for a double epic. There we go. Boop. Easy. 4, da four damage to the side targets and 7 damage to the main one. Tell me that this is an OP. That's a very strong... That's that's just really good. Alright then. Well, let's see. Do I want to snipe this guy? No. Because I'm out of range. So we're gonna take some arrows. We're gonna tank them. It's fine. They're just dealt pretty low amount of damage anyway. So it, it wasn't like we lost anything. The Sasquatch regenerates, even though his regeneration is trash, at least it's a little bit of a something something. Like like 1 HP. 1 HP at the, at the beginning of his turn, that's very much. That's a very very high amount of regeneration, guys. Okay, now here we got to a Weaponsmith, and Weaponsmith is actually pretty pretty darn good to have. Especially with the Bombardier, because if we increase her damage, we're gonna be able to one-shot all the enemies. Now that she deals 6 damage, she can officially one-shot Archers. And the archers are kind of our problem because we can't, re we couldn't really kill them with one, with one shot, so they usually just kite back and you know keep on poking us. But now that's not gonna be the case because the bombardier can just one tap them, and we also have the Sasquatch's road spike or whatever, whatever it's called, his uh, third ability basically, and it's it's pretty darn nice. I mean, it it has only three range, sure, but it deals true damage, and true damage is always appreciated. Oh yeah, 11 epic damage, there we go. Now we're getting into the good numbers. As I said, this party gets better as they level up, but in the early game, oh no, the early game is really, really bad. Thankfully, this guy wasted his strong attack, that's nice, now he cannot use it, like, at all. I mean, he can, but it has, like, what, 3 turns cooldown or so? <laughs> so he can pretty much use it once per combat, which is pretty, which is alright, I guess. Here we're just gonna... Kaboom these guys, and this guy's about to get smacked. Unfortunately, he didn't die, so the Sasquatch is gonna finish him off. There we go. Not too bad. Yeah, the, the late game with, with this party is actually very solid, especially if you get some damage upgrades along the way. Alright, what do I want to get here? Hmm, I guess we can get... Pull nah. I was thinking about the pulling vine, but then I was like, nah, it's not needed. Here we also got pretty lucky with the... <coughs> oh my god. I'm sorry guys. Oh, I don't know why, but I'm a little sick. I feel I'm feeling a little bit under the weather today. I'm getting some cough I'm getting some coughing piss here and there, so if I start coughing at one point in the video, I'm sorry. It is what it is. Sometimes we all get sick from time to time, you know. Alright, so where was I? Oh yeah, Breakbark. Uh, I, I was thinking about getting the pulling vines, but I got the other ability instead. I don't know why. I felt like it could be useful here, because, you know, even if he gets rooted, you can still teleport away for up to, like, three hexes or so. Which is not bad. And you root uh, every enemy that's uh, near you. Also, that was a pretty nice bombardier basic attack. We end up one-shotting one two people. That was pretty good. Alright. This guy's gonna keep on shooting. 
I don't care, I'm just gonna teleport. And yeah, here I confirmed something for myself. Uh, it doesn't, this ability doesn't root your allies, which is good. Because some abilities do have a friendly fire. And uh, even though I played this game for over 100 hours at this point, I still don't know some, if some abilities will or, or, will or not uh, damage your units. But we'll see about that. Okay, here unfortunately Burrick is in a bad spot. <laughs> He's right in the middle of this um, lightning uh, area, so he's gonna take whopping 5 magic damage. Which, you know, for any me other melee unit, that would be bad, but, you know, he regenerates, so who cares. He can... He's, he's literally one of the best tanks in the game for a reason, because you can just keep on tanking with him and, you know, just keep on going. Alright, unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to burst Krumtak this time, because Bravark is a little bit out of position. I mean, we're still gonna chunk, the major chunk a good amount of his health, but, you know, he's not gonna die, so we gotta wait. We gotta wait for this guy, come on. Come on. Do your animations, and of course. Of course you're gonna be down there. Let's see, Bravark. Thankfully, Bravark can reach him, so he's gonna get Branched Bolt to the face with 11 damage. And I'm just gonna finish him off with the Dwarf Zuka. I mean, yeah, the Sasquatch took a little bit of a friendly fire damage because he was behind the Bombardier, but who cares? We still be win. There we go. Not too bad. Okay. First adventure completed. <laughs> Zero flawless encounters. Low. I mean, yeah, of course, we're not gonna be getting flawless encounters up in here. And we have the Sasquatch and Braybark. These guys are, are created to take damage. So, of course. Of course, we're gonna be taking HP damage. Because otherwise, we're not gonna be making any use out of their regeneration. Okay, what are we gonna get up in here? Ah, Troll Chieftain, bruh. In the last challenge, he, he didn't show up, but in this in this challenge though, he's gonna be showing up quite a few times. I guess he's making up for the last time. Oh, this guy's a 1 HP. That was a burr moment. Yeah, the bombardier of the game is pretty bad. Okay, he's moving up. Uh, thankfully, we're out of range. At least for now. Well, I, no, we're not. He's still gonna use his... God, goddamn ice spike ability, but who cares? It is what it is. We can't really do much about it. He's gonna use it. Who's gonna take the shot? Eh, the Sasquatch. All right, that's that was probably the best option. Okay, smack this guy. Ah, uh, he's gonna attack the bombardier. That was a little unexpected. I forgot that Bravark has a knockback. But anyway, uh, what do I want to do? I guess we're gonna try to kill him. Oh, he left with one HP again. If the Bombardier was level 2, or at least if she dealt 3 damage instead of 2, we would've been, we would have been fine here, but no. Because of that, we're gonna take a, an additional 6 damage to the Sasquatch. Which sucked, but it is what it is. At least he can regenerate at the beginning of his turn. Okay, oh no, we got exhausted. Come on now. Why you gotta do me like that? Okay, let's try this. Oh, we took a little bit of damage. It doesn't matter. Okay, what are we gonna... Oh, no. Oh, no. Why you, why you hate me like that? Why are you giving me the bar barbarian encounter? I hate this encounter. Just because of how many enemies there are. I mean, look at it. Look at how many enemies we have. Thankfully, we have this ability, which which sets the ground on fire and it deals a little bit of damage. And that's pretty good, because, you know, the trolls can regenerate if they're on fire. Same for the Sasquatch. I'm not sure why, but that's, that's the way he, he works. If he's on fire, he doesn't get to heal, just like the trolls. Okay, now let's see, can we get something up in here? I think we can. Okay, Bravark, he just gonna stay there. Let's kaboom, there we go, two of them down. Uh, this barbarian here is pretty screwed, we can't really do anything with him, so let's just do this at least. And this guy, I think he's gonna die too. Hmm, or is he? Uh, yeah, he looks pretty doomed. Oh, well. at least at least he killed the troll champion, so it's not like he died for nothing. But yeah, here he's just gonna get smacked. And speaking of being smacked, the other barbarian that's right there is probably gonna die too. Thankfully, the troll chieftain wasted his uh, ice rain ability on him, so at least that that was good. You know, now we don't have to worry about uh, Bravark being frozen or taking all the way up to six physical damage. Okay, let's smack you. Alright, now what do we want to do? I guess we'll settle down to kill this guy. We can't really do anything. Uh, we gotta sacrifice the last barbarian, unfortunately. Oh no, he got smacked. 
Well, technically, the, the Troll Breaker used his uh, Battering Ram ability, which is better than his basic attack because his basic attack can do way, way more damage than that, so that's good. Now, here I decided to not attack because Bredrock's uh, basic attacks and branch bow have a knockback. And if this guy gets knocked back, um, I don't know. I just don't want him to use uh, his uh, Ice Rain ability. Well, never mind. I guess I guess he is gonna use it because I knocked him back anyway. <laughs> because I guess I was impatient. And now Braveheart is frozen and he lost the majority of his health. Well, that sucks. Will Braveheart die? Or is he gonna live to see another day? Will he live? Ooh, he lived with 1 HP. And this and the Trollbreaker went for the Sasquatch instead, so... Yay. Okay, Braveheart is gonna live. Which means that we don't have to get a, a bandage. Nice. Okay. He lived with exactly one HP. Now we're gonna get a branch bow again. Because honestly, it's a, it's a pretty good ability. I, I use it most of the time. The only time I don't use it though is on uh, the, the Wild Moon. Because a lot of enemies there are immune to the uh, effects of brambles. Like, I, let me think. Which enemies were exactly immune to that? I think the sapling is immune. The the the, the nightshade, uh, vine fall. Wait, no. I think the vine fall can still can be affected by them. The warlock definitely can't. The Ashraven enchantress, and I think that's all of them. Maybe I'm missing one enemy, but I don't know. I don't know. Who knows? Maybe I am. Oops. Ah, uh, the random notification up in here. I guess one of my videos got uh, got done uh, uploading. That was probably that was probably the notification. Sorry for that. Sorry if you heard that. Anyway, um, now we got this combat encounter, which is probably one of my favorites because it's easy. It's it's very hard to die on this combat encounter or to lose. And on top of that, you also get a uh, pretty good re rewards. One of your units gets plus one extra damage, and plus one damage is very solid, especially if you get it on the right unit. And here, pretty much, I'm, I'm, I hope we get it on the Bombardier. If we get it on the Bombardier, I'll be very, very happy. But will we get it on the Bombardier? You have to wait and to find out. Okay, Bombardier, you go here. And kaboom. There we go. Some nice, juicy, epic damage. And we're gonna finish him off with the Branch Ball. Hmm. Alright. Oh yeah, and the Bleed... And actually, the Bleed finished him off because we knocked him back. I didn't know that, actually. I didn't know that knockback can cause uh, the bleed to trigger. Hmm, interesting. The more you know, I guess. Okay, this guy's gonna get blown up. Unfortunately, we end up killing one of our infantries for no reason, because lol, friendly fire. And yes, <laughs> the bombardier got the plus one damage, even though she killed uh, one, of our, one of our units. Uh, I mean, yeah, it was friendly fire, but come on. Still. Okay, we're gonna root this guy in the Yeti encounter. I really hate the Yeti encounter, just because of how rare it is. Like, you barely see this combat encounter. And something yeah, and usually I just forget of what the Yetis even do. I know that they're like the Sasquatch but be but beefier. I don't really know anything else about them. I mean they're sure they're not like the worst enemy to deal with. They are annoying for sure, but I, I would say they're much worse enemies than uh, the Yetis. Plus, you, you, you don't really see them that often, you only see them like once every blue moon, so... Whenever you see them, usually they're not that much of a threat. Okay, let's uh, boom, kaboom this guy. There we go. Whopping 11 damage. That was a lot of damage. We're gonna summon more brambles. But this guy was smart, he went around the brambles. Oh no, Braver took some damage. But it doesn't matter, because the Yeti is still dead. Okay, not too bad, not too bad. Okay, let's see. Ooh, hello, sir. We got a sharpening stone. Unfortunately, we're 20, 20, 20 gold off from uh, getting another one. That's a little sad, but whatever. We're gonna give it to Braveheart because why not? He deals a lot of damage. He's like our main uh, single target damage dealer, so getting more damage on him will be nice. Okay, uh, what do we got up in here? Hmm. Alright, that's not banned. We can definitely deal with this. And yeah, this combat encounter was actually kind of bad. Pretty easy overall. Okay, so... While this, while this uh, battle is going while the battle is going on, what should we talk about? Well, I guess we can talk about the Sasquatch and how bad he is. I mean, 
Who, who likes the Sasquatch like genuinely? Come on. Tell me that tell me that the Sasquatch is good. Can you? No, you can't. Because he he just isn't good. I'm sorry, but what is good about him? Like at level one he has only 8 HP. Which you may think it's good, but think about it. 8 HP is not that much. That's pretty much the same HP that uh, Gerald has. But Gerald also has uh, 5 armor, and that's uh, an additional 5 efficient HP, which is a lot more. His basic attacks are fine, but like 3 to 4 damage at level 1, that's pretty pathetic if you ask me. Unfortunately, here though, the Bombardier uh, dies because I ended up setting her on fire on accident, because, you know, friendly fire. <laughs> And yeah, here I did move the Sasquatch, and you may be thinking, eh, it's whatever. Well, it's not whatever, because something bad's about to happen. Would you look at that. The Bombardier ended up uh, pretty firing the, the Sasquatch as well. Thankfully, he lived with 1 HP, but still, uh, that was bad. Thankfully, we have our ba a bandage, so it's not that bad. We're gonna get that uh, rocket jump, because honestly, I think it's the spear ability. The the, the 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 bomb is fine, like it, it has infinite range and you may think that that's uh, really OP. The problem is that enemies can target the bomb even after it's been uh, set off. If, if, if you can set the bomb and if it doesn't reach uh, the enemy on the first turn, another enemy can easily just uh, disable it. Well, not really disable it, it's still gonna blow up if it gets hit, but it may, it's not gonna hit the target that you want, which kinda sucks. That's why I prefer the rocket jump, because at least it can get you out of sticky situations. And it's a normal action, or simple action as it, as it was called. I'm gonna call it normal action, because that's what it is, it's a normal action. You can use it before you move or after you move, it's, it's, it's a normal action. So yeah, it's pretty good. Now for the Sasquatch. Sasquatch, just not, not good. I don't, I don't see why people play him. I mean, yeah, here I play him because, you know, he's a part of the challenge, but the more I play him, the more I start to realize why people hate him. Like, he's he's meant to be, like, this quote-unquote scaling champion, but he just doesn't seem to scale that well at all. Like, sure, at, his, at max through level, he does have 14 HP, and 14 HP is a lot of HP. I think that's uh, the same as Braybark. I think Braybark also has 14 HP at uh, level 3, which is... Pretty good, but the problem is that he has zero armor, and having no armor is bad. And before you say, oh, but he has regeneration. The regeneration is not good at all. Like, at level 1 and 2, he only regenerates uh, 1 HP at the beginning of his turn, and at level 3, he regenerates a whopping 2 HP. Congratulations, now bleeding is not gonna do damage to you. Now damage over time abilities are not gonna do damage to you, but everything else definitely can, and it will do damage. That's why I don't get it. His regeneration just isn't enough. I feel like if he regenerated something like 3 HP at level 3, maybe that would have been better. But unfortunately, he just doesn't. He just there. Just doesn't regenerate enough HP. That's that's my problem with Sasquatch. It's not his damage, it's not his abilities, because in my opinion, his abilities are kinda fine. You know, he has a lot of stuns, he has a root. He has a, a he has a lot of ways to immobilize enemies. He does have a, an ability that use true damage, and he, he does have some decent cleanup. The problem is that he just does, he just fails to be a tank. Like at level three, maybe he is somewhat good, but there are definitely better options than uh, the Sasquatch in terms of like having a having a singular tank. Braybrook is like the Sasquatch, but but much better in every way, shape, and form. So yeah. The Sasquatch is just kind of a sad, he's just disappointing if you would ask me. I don't know, I just don't really like him. And I'm pretty sure most people will agree with me on that. The Sasquatch just sucks. I mean, are, they, are there any bad, any worse uh, uh, companions to pick than the Sasquatch? I'm not sure, maybe the Sorceress, but at least the Sorceress has a clear purpose. Well, kind of, I don't know. We'll see. Once we get to her review, maybe we'll, maybe I'll have a better opinion on her. But as of right now, she's definitely one of the worst or slash weaker companions in the game. Okay, now we got to the second boss fight. Can we beat the second boss fight? And um, probably yes. It is pretty difficult to be with only three party members though, because uh, you got you. Like two two of your units have to have to focus the crystals while only one only one of your units can focus on enemies. 
and be sure you can do the whole kiting around the crystals and you know kill all the enemies before you focus the focus the boss but at the same time I don't like doing that I like to kill this boss as fast as possible so that's why I do that okay here let's just destroy this crystal Wow now well, let's move up in here finish uh, this uh, priest off Okay, Braveheart is unfortunately going to take some damage. Not much I can do here. Yikes. Yep, he took a lot of damage. Is he going to survive though? We'll find out. Come on, Braveheart. You can make it. You can push it. Come on, you're a tank. You can do it. Okay, let's see. What can we do? Well, here I'm gonna re retreat him because I don't want him to die. We're gonna, we're gonna unleash the brambles. We're gonna destroy this crystal on the side. And now we're just waiting. Okay, the trolls are locked up, so they can't really do anything. This guy is pretty much dead, so now we're getting into the second phase. Whoa! Well, what are we gonna do? Can we survive? Are we gonna make it? Well, here actually, I made the. I decided to use the mud ball because it ended up destroying two of the crystals, and thankfully, we can burst this guy down in the first round. Just because of the the RNG on the crystals. They spawned so close to the boss that I could, could just use my splash damage on the Sasquatch to, just to damage him and the crystals. And that's what ended up bringing me the victory, pretty much. I mean, yeah, I probably could have killed him in the next round, but we, we, we very may not have lost Brave Bark in the process, and that would have sucked. But anyway, we got it, and we got one flawless encounter. Yay, we got at least one flawless encounter. But now we get to the worst area of the game, Interdimensional Menace. I hate this area. I hate it. I, I know a lot of people say that um, uh, the Wild Moon is worse, but to me this area is uh, much, 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 much harder to, to deal with than uh, the Wild Moon. Sure, the Wild Moon is hard on its own, but this area, it's, it's way more annoying. It's way more annoying than you think. And here we get a demon encounter as our first uh, combat scenario. And let me tell you, that sucks. Regardless of the part that you're using, getting a demon encounter on the first, for for, on, for like your uh, as your first combat encounter, it's it sucks. Especially with this party because we can't really do too much. I mean, sure we're gonna beat it. Nobody's gonna die, but we definitely took some damage. Okay, let's blow this guy up. Delete half of his health. There we go. Without with it, something. And the mud bow for the road. There we go. Okay, we survived the first combat encounter. And we got an elixir of life. Imagine. Imagine getting an elixir of life just for a simple combat encounter. Lol. Okay, let's uh, level her up. We're not gonna get the napalm for obvious reasons. <clears throat> we are in, in, in this level, fly, burning or fire damage doesn't really help you out. Okay, Bar got invigorated, that's good. Oh, the Barbarian! Bruh, come on, I really wanted the Barbarian. He would've been so good. Thankfully, we got uh, an early Weaponsmith, so the, the Bombardier deals 5 damage right away. Which is good. Now, if we, if we run into a Demon Encounter, we can one-shot Demon Imps with ease. And that's pretty good. That's very good. And once she gets to level 3, we're gonna do whopping 6 damage. And that's gonna be even better. Okay, let's lock and load, get more range. Let's see which enemy will be the problem. Well, from all you can see, it's definitely going to, going to be the Exultant because of his efficient range. And, and I can't stretch enough how annoying the, this guy is. Like, having whopping 6 efficient range is crazy. It's definitely crazy. Also, nice blood satisfaction. We got, all, we got 3 enemies with one shot. Very good. We're gonna root this guy because he's getting a little bit too close for comfort. Okay, thankfully he used his full action ability, so he's not gonna be able to attack us. Uh, let's move up in here. That was actually kind of risky because... Uh, Braveheart may or may not be dead, actually. I don't know why, but I feel like Braveheart is gonna die. We'll see, we'll see about that, though. Thankfully this abomination is dead. And will Braveheart make it? Ooh, he lived with 1 HP. Well, he lived. The problem is that he is kind of hard stuck. Like, he can't do anything. No matter what I do, he's gonna die. So, at least we can... I don't know. I don't know. I guess we can just clean these guys. That's something that we can do. 
but the Sasquatch is too far away to do anything, so Braybrook ends up uh, kicking the bucket. And yeah, I mean, this guy dealt his maximum damage, he dealt 7 damage, so there was no way that Braybrook was making it out. He, he died, but at least we got the Exultant with him, so he didn't die for nothing. Okay, now let's just smack this guy. And there we go, we got we got our revenge for Brave Rock. He lost one, one HP, but it doesn't matter because we have a, you know, we, we have a bandage and we also have the Elixir of Life. And I was pretty stupid there. I could have just used the Elixir of Life right away instead of uh, wasting a bandage. <laughs> and yeah, here Brave Rock is sadly being exhausted, so... That's gonna suck for uh, a couple a couple combat encounters. And yeah, I think this the exhaustion lasts for three nodes. So for three nodes, he's gonna be exhausted during any combat scenario, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Okay, here I just as you saw, I decided to as you saw earlier, I decided to shoot at uh, the leader. I think I think it's a little bit better than the emissary because at least because they don't get surrounded by tentacles. I mean, yeah, having to deal with less enemies is good, but at the same time, I would much rather not be surrounded by tentacles. Because it sucks. You have to waste a turn just to just to kill them. Or just to make have enough room to move around comfortably without being smacked by a ran random tentacle. Okay, now let's blow this guy up. And there we go. Braybrook is rooted, so even if he takes uh, some damage, he's gonna regenerate it back up. Because when he's rooted, he regenerates, I believe, like, 3 HP. Kaboom! There we go. All three of them are dead. And we're gonna Dwarf Zuka this guy for the loss. There we go. Not too bad. For being exhausted, it didn't, it, it didn't feel that bad. But here I decided to finally cure his exhaustion because we have a demon encounter. And demon encounters are not fun, especially if you're exhausted. They suck. Okay, here we go. We have some demon imps, we have a couple of doggos, we have a flareon. This, got, this goddamn flareon. And we also have a... what was this thing called? A magma elemental. The magma elemental is probably the easiest one to, to beat. Because we have some good... Even though we don't have a lot of single target damage, we, we do have a lot of uh, stalling power. We have the mud ball, we have the decoy, we have the brambles. We have pretty good stuff. Oh yeah, there we go. One shot at this Duggo. Due to the epic effect. We're gonna smack the old. Oh no, the Sasquatch got a, is on fire. Well, that's bad. Because now, he can't really do anything, he can't regenerate. Okay, will this guy get uh, rooted? Yes, he is. Alright. Let's just kaboom. There we go. Take that damage. Okay, branch both to finish him off. Okay, 11 damage. Not bad. And I'm gonna use this, uh, this attack just to be sure. Because if I used my melee attack, there was a chance that this uh, demon hound would have, uh, you know, survived. Okay, we got a warm handshake, that's actually really good, because now the Vomadir deals an additional plus one damage. That's very good. Okay, now her damage is even higher. That's uh, very, very good. I wonder how high we can get her damage. Can we get her to deal all the way up to eight damage? That will be awesome. I'm pretty sure that's the limit. Because if you get... Um, because uh, at level three she deals five physical damage. And if you get three damage upgrades, which is the maximum, you, she's gonna do 8 damage, and 8 damage is a lot. That's enough to one-shot trolls. If, if only we got it on the Stormcloud's Winter, that would've been pretty OP. Okay, branch bow... or should we? Eh, yeah, I'm just gonna branch bow him. I wasn't sure, if, I'm pretty sure that my basic attack wasn't gonna finish him off, even with the uh, epic bonus damage. Okay, let's blast this guy back. Blast him back a little bit, because I don't want him to hit Brave Arc. Let's position up it here, knock him back again. Let's uh, summon the Brambles. Now if he tries to walk up, he's gonna get rooted. Okay, kaboom! Oh, he lived with 2 HP. If he, lived, if he lived with 1 HP, uh, he would've been dead, but eh. Whatever, we're gonna smack him and he's gonna uh, die. There we go. Now let's keep going. But first of all, let's get... Uh, yeah, I decided to go for the Robobomb. Just because why not? Variety, am I right? Okay, let's accept it. We got some good stuff. Let's keep on moving. Um, random event, don't care. Another random event, we can't really interact with it. We can't really interact with this one either, so the Bombardier took a little bit of damage, but it's fine. 
Okay, now she deals 7 damage. And 7 damage is a lot of damage. Okay. Uh, who is next? You? I'm just gonna root him. Because I, I don't know. I just wanted to root him. Okay. Now this, now this thing deals 6. Okay, what do I wanna do? I guess we can just blow this guy up. Whopping 7 area damage. Okay, you sir. You're gonna get smacked too. Nobody safe from being smacked. Okay, now here, let's just take care of this Flareon. I know that this is stupid, and now the, the Sasquatch is about to get his ankles bitten off by the Doggos, but it's fine. Now here, I'm not sure why I did this. I was very stupid on that, because look at it. These guys survive with uh, 2 HP each, and that's bad, because now they're just gonna keep on attacking. But I guess it was better than using my basic attack, because they would've lived with 1 HP. And you know what happens when, a de when one of the de demon enemies lives with 1 HP? They blow up. <laughs> that would've been hilarious if all of them just blew up. But you, but uh, something similar will happen later on. Just stay tuned for that. Okay, unfortunately the Sasquatch ends up uh, dying. Because, you know, he couldn't regenerate because his regeneration is bad. And he can easily get, count get countered by a simple thing as being on fire. But anyway, we're gonna move up, up in here. And we got a demon lord encounter. Unfortunately, we got a bad one. We got a bad one with the villager. It's a pretty darn annoying one. Because I mean, yeah, I already, I already got the achievement where you have to, where you have to protect the villager and you know, not, don't let them die. But that was a, that was a long time ago, so I can just let them die if I want to. But I'm gonna try to protect them anyway because why not? Okay, let's summon some brambles. Keep these guys uh, stalled. Unfortunately, this player is gonna attack me. That sucks. Okay, what do I want to do? Well, I'm gonna take him off. I'm gonna take care of him. And oh, well, the villager is dead. Well, that was quick. <laughs> he just became, he just became the dead. So he, so fast. Ah, uh, goddamn demon lords. What? I love this enemy. So balanced. But anyway, okay, let's uh move back in position. And let's just harden ourselves, giggity. And now we take one less damage, and we have plus one damage on top of that. Okay, look, kaboom. Oh no, they live with one HP. Well, that's bad. <laughs> Explosion number one. Oh no, Berryberg may be dead. Oh no. Okay, <laughs> Berryberg survived, but that was very, very unnecessary. I don't think I should have used her basic attack there. That was bad. Okay, will Brave Burke survive or will he die? What's gonna happen? Uh, let's just do that. Okay, this guy will live with 2 HP. Also, uh, I'm not sure how this works, but I'm pretty sure this guy just spawned on the on the on the brambles and he then became instantly rooted. Why? I don't know. It just happened. Okay, now here I desperately tried to save Brave Burke, but I forgot that this guy is. Uh, has priorities, so Berberg just died anyway. That was bad, but it doesn't matter. We can heal him up. We can patch him up. We can patch up that uh, crippling wound. It's all good. We have an elixir of life, so we can use it if need be. Okay, let's see. Nothing interesting here. Uh, uh, another, another riddle. Uh, thankfully, I got it right. I'm usually pretty bad when it comes down to riddles, but hey, I got it right. Okay, roadside quarrel. Unfortunately, didn't get it right, so we lost some HP, but it, who cares? It was like one HP to, for the whole party. That's nothingness. Okay, now we got to probably the hardest uh, combat encounter that we got uh, up, up until this point. And I know what you're thinking, but it doesn't look too bad. You only have three abominations and three. Uh, um, what, were, what were these guys? What were these guys called? Um, uh, priest. Yeah, priest. But, we also have an obelisk, and this obelisk is gonna be very, very annoying. Because, as you know, he heals. He heals up uh, enemies. And if we, don't, if, and if, we don't, if we don't kill the enemy, here's, the obelisk is just gonna heal them back up. So we have to kill one, every, one enemy at a time. We have to kill a, one abomination every time. The other problem is that he also spawns tentacles, so we can't really do that. Okay, now I'm just gonna destroy those tentacles. Let's just send a dwarf, a dwarf zooka towards this guy. Why not? 
knock him back. Uh, what do I want to do? What do I want to do? What do I want to do? Oof, this is bad. This is bad. Okay, let's just do this, I guess. Uh, the Sasquatch is gonna get pounded up in here. This guy dealt close to his uh, maximum damage. That was not good. That was no bueno. Okay, at least we can just roar at them. We can stun them for a turn. Now we don't have to worry about them. Uh, let's just do it here. I could have I could have bombarded the, the other guy, but the, the other side, the, uh, the other abomination. But I was like, eh, whatever. It is what it is. Okay, more tentacles. Um, and okay. I'm I'm stupid. I should have moved the Sasquatch here. I should have moved them. I don't know why I didn't, but it, it doesn't matter, I guess, because look at that bombardier damage. 11 epic damage. That's just ridiculous. 11. Brave Rock's epic effect on his basic attack doesn't give him that much. So, yeah. I guess those uh, damage upgrades really helped out the bombardier. Okay, let's send out uh, the, the raw bomb. Let's use it for once. I mean, it's, a, it's not a terrible ability, but it's also not great either. It's pretty bad. Pretty bad, because it can get stopped by pretty much anything. Anything that can attack will stop it, actively. Okay, let's see, will the bomb make it? Will it make it to the obelisk? The bomb is so close, it should be able to make it. And... It makes it. I was gonna go, Wah! I'm fucking angry. I can imagine the bomb just screaming white people as it explodes. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why, but I just, I just, I just like to imagine that it screams white people when it explodes. Kind of like Pollux. Pollux when he's angry, be like, "Oh, white people." <laughs> anyway, okay, we're gonna go for an elixir of life. Thankfully, Braveheart got invigorated, so we can use our invigoration potion on the bombardier because she does have a lot of full action abilities, and that's pretty nice. Okay, everyone is healed up. Everyone is at full HP. Two, of, two out of our three party members are invigorated. And we should be able to shred through Ereza. As lo oh yeah, just like that. If, if our clones spawn close together, we can just utilize our area damage to the max. And because uh, Braveheart is invigorated, he also can move three hexes. And somehow, I got the right one. I wasn't really planning for this to happen, but it but, but it just did. So now Ariza is at like one HP, <laughs> so we could hit her with anything, and she's gonna die. Thankful, unfortunately, here the clones aren't exactly close to each other, so let's just use the global bomb. It actually, oh no, here a little bit of a miscalculation happened here because, as you can see, the bomb is like one hex away from uh, being detonated, but. You're, you're not gonna believe what happens here. Look at that. The, the, the original one was this. <laughs> the original one came out, hit the bomb, the bomb exploded, and then she got, went through to her other face. <laughs> that was hilarious. She pretty much just uh, destroyed herself by attacking the bomb. Anyway, well that was funny, but let's keep moving. We have uh, another two phases to take down. And thankfully the other two phases are easier than the first one. The first one is very annoying because of the RG aspect. But here, at least you know what's gonna happen. Okay, branch ball, round two, there we go. This time we end up one-tapping her with 11 damage. Uh, let's just destroy this tentacle, why not? I have nothing better to do with the Sasquatch, so might as well use his ranged attack. Here comes the eyeballs. And the eyeballs are gonna do absolutely nothing. And do I want to use my attack? Eh, why not? Let's just do our area attack. Braveheart, unfortunately, he's not gonna get the branch ball for uh, the next turn. It's gonna be on cooldown. Here, <laughs> I was kind of stupid there. I just moved the Sasquatch through the fire. <laughs> I don't know why. I could have just uh, moved him, uh, moved him uh, to the side instead of making him walk through the fire, but. Oh no, I guess I was I guess I was stupid here. A little bit of a brother moment, but it's fine. Okay, the woman here unfortunately she's also on 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 fire. But that's but that's how good. Okay, let's just send the dwarf Zuka her way. Or eh, nah, let's just clean this up actually. Because why not? Okay. Smack. Smack with the basic attack. Let's uh back up a little bit. And let's see. 
I'm pretty sure we're gonna get her next round on the next turn. Question is, what are we gonna kill her with? The Bombardier or the Sasquatch? Who is going to be the one to, de to deal with the finishing blow? Well... Oh, it wasn't a Bombardier because she just died. Oof. Rip Bombardier. Okay, I guess the Sasquatch has to finish her off. Okay, just to be sure, we're gonna use the Spike. There we go, 6 true damage. No, that really matters, as long as it's 6 damage. And there we go. Iriza defeated, surprisingly. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it was kind of difficult, but we got her. Uh, okay, now let's wait for the good old daddy sorcerer to bail us out with the portal. And we're gonna go yeet. Peace, we're out, -y. And you can have a nice death exploding all the way over there. Okay, not too bad. We survived this with zero flawless combat encounters. XD. Anyway, now we're moving on to the last adventure, the Wild Moon. How are we gonna do with the Wild Moon, you may ask? Well, it's surprisingly not as bad as you think. Sure. Is it like uh, easy? No, it's not easy. But it's definitely not as hard as um, the other level. Okay, here we're just gonna set this guy on fire. Unfortunately, he's not gonna die on the next turn. So I'm just gonna move Braybark in his face and fortify just so he doesn't do any damage to me. And yeah. He's gonna do two armor damage and he's gonna burn to death. What a nice way to end yourself. Okay, let's... Uh... Well, actually, we're not gonna move because of the, the Nightshade. I hate this Nightshade. I hate them on a very personal level and I don't know why. I'm, I'm not sure if it's because of the poison damage they do. Maybe it's because of something else, but I just don't like them. I am roots. Okay, well, it, let, let just one shot this guy. Why not? One less uh, sapling to worry about. And let's blow these guys up. There we go, another sapling down. This guy's rooted, so he can't do anything. Uh, we can't quite reach him, so I'm just gonna uh, lock and load. Get some extra range. Uh, man, I'm not. I'm not gonna attack the. I'm not gonna attack the doggo. Okay, he went for Braveheart. Does it matter? Absolutely not. He pushed away the Sasquatch, which is good because now Braveheart is in a better position. And boom, there we go. We took a little bit of damage, but it's all good. It's all good and fine. Oh, the bombardier got exhausted. Eh, doesn't matter. We have an energy potion, so it's fine. And yeah, this is one of the, one of the rare times, one of the very rare times that I actually go for the top path. Usually, I go straight through the bottom path on uh, the Wild Moon because it gives the most experience and it allows you to hit to hit the most nodes. But this time, I decided to go for the top one instead because of uh, because of a specific combat encounter. It's kind of like the troll combat encounter in uh, Stormcloud's Winter. The only difference is that instead of instead of uh, you getting plus one damage, you get plus one armor. And considering that we have a uh, Brave Arc, the Bombardier, and the Sasquatch, getting plus one armor on it, any of them will be alright. Okay, then maybe not on the Sasquatch, because the Sasquatch doesn't have any armor regeneration, so if he loses that one armor, it's gone for the rest of the combat encounter. And on the Bombardier, I guess it will be fine. Okay, this guy just knocked away, knocked back my uh, decoy. That sucked. But it doesn't matter. Let's just smack these guys. Well, I'll take a little bit of tr tr uh, reflective damage, but it's all good. That doggo is dead, and this doggo is gonna kick the bucket any minute now. I just wa I just wait for Braybark. I just want him to regenerate, but unfortunately, he ended up screwing me over. But it didn't matter because we still killed the dog before uh, the sapling turned into a trunk. So yay! Okay, we're gonna go for the napalm this time because obviously. In, we're in the wild moon, and a lot of enemies take twice as much damage from burning, so setting them on fire is obviously gonna be very nice. Okay, let's reposition. And let's see, this is the comedy color that I was talking about. It's, it's not that difficult, honestly. Okay. Thankfully, we have poke oaks, and as you know, poke oaks are sigma males. They're gonna attack. They don't discriminate. They're gonna attack anything that gets into their personal space, including you, so that's why you wanna keep uh, your distance. Okay. Well, we end up blowing up the decoy this time successfully. 
Braver is taking quite a quite a decent, quite a lot of damage actually. But thankfully he regenerates, so it doesn't matter. We can we can let him tank for quite a while. Well, like kaboom! There we go. We killed one of them. Pokok is helping us out a little bit, but this guy ended up uh, healing healing up the um, what would you call it? The ogre. But it doesn't matter. We're just gonna use our branch ball to finish him off. The Sasquatch took a little bit of damage. Well, not a little bit. It was actually a lot. Six damages. Not. It's not nothingness. Okay, at least the archer is on fire. The Sasquatch survives with one HP. Damn. Okay. Thankfully, he ended up smacking both of them because he survived. If he didn't, uh, this could have played a little bit differently, but it's fine. And Bremer gets the extra armor. That's uh, actually very good. Okay, let's uh, try. Hey, we got it. Now the Bombardier gets plus one HP. We're gonna go for this ability though, because as I said earlier in the video, the branch ball, the the the, the brambles are not very efficient on this level because a lot of enemies are just immune to them, so it'll be it'll be, it'll be a useless ability quite literally. So that's why I decided to settle down for this the other ability instead. I could have went for the long range one that deals true damage, but I don't really find it to be that good. Like, what's the point of it? Like, sure, it deals true damage and, it's, and it has 5 hex radius, but... Eh, I don't know, it's, it's, it's weird. It's a weird ability and I, I, I just don't tend to use it at all. At least with the, that ability that we got right now, at least we're able to do some sort of damage. And it deals uh, additional damage to weakened targets. Not where really we have a lot of ways to weaken enemies. Our only way to weaken enemies is pretty much with the bombardier. If she, if we, if we get someone with the napalm strike. But I'm not sure if I have really used this uh, epic effect at all. Maybe I, maybe I did. I don't know. Okay, blow up the spider. Uh the spiders. Probably one of, the, probably one of the most annoying enemies in the game. Who likes spiders? They just suck. Okay, especially because of that. Poison attack that deals true damage, obviously inflicts poison, and on top of that it also roots, roots uh, uh, the unit. So, yay. Oh well, it doesn't matter, this guy is dead. Okay, now let's move on. But before that, let's level up the Sasquatch. This time I'm gonna go for the Mighty Bullow because, I don't know, I feel like some st having more stuns is gonna be good. Sylvan Elf, unfortunately, we can't really get him. Because, you know, he doesn't deal enough area damage. He can hit two enemies, but I need an enemy... I, I, need, to, I need the unit to, hit, to be able to hit at least three enemies in order for that to be... Class, in order for, for him or her to be classified. And he just he just slightly below the, the number that I, that, I, that I am looking for. Here I'm not sure why I didn't use my range attack. It would have been good. But eh. Eh. Okay, unfortunately, I'm not sure if we're gonna kill this spider, so I'm just gonna eat him over there. Now he's stunned, he can't do anything. The Asherman Enchantress ends up smacking the Sasquatch. He has only 2 HP remaining, so that's bad. Um, I don't know what I wanna do here, so let's just do some damage to him. And... Uh, okay, well, rest in peace Sasquatch. Well, that sucked. That was just, just a little bit unfortunate. Sasquatch ends up kicking the bucket, but it's all good. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna make it out. Okay, here, let's just try this. There we go. <laughs> that was worth it, because the poison woke up uh, Brave Archer right away. So, I would say that was worth it. I was thinking about using Branch Ball, but eh. Why use it? Why bother? Okay. Oh, come on. Kill her. There we go. Alright, not too bad. We lost Sasquatch, but it's fine. We have a bandage. We can use it. We can use it if we need to. Okay, let's move up in here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now that's what I'm talking about. Plus one damage on Braybark. Very good. Okay, here... Uh, let's just go for the rocket jump again. Why not? Okay, let's hack the branches. We can't really do anything else. Let's use the tent, let's heal up, and let's go to the last combat encounter before the boss fight. And that's actually kind of easy. It's one of the easier ones. 
Honestly, to me, and any combat encounter here that doesn't have um, what would you call it? Nightshades is a good combat encounter to me. I just hate this. I just hate this enemy. I hate him a lot. Okay, let's root this guy. I don't want him to be getting any closer than that. At least not quite yet. Pokok is helping us out as per usual. Here they're piled up nicely, so we're gonna kill three enemies out of four. Very nice, very satisfying attack. The Pokok finishes off uh, the, this trunk. And yeah, that was very good. <laughs> very, very nice indeed. Okay, sm push this guy back. Uh, let's just kaboom them. There we go, nice little kaboom. Okay, what do we want to do here? Um, I guess we're just gonna do this. And can we kill him? Oh yeah, we definitely can. Well, that was easy. That was easy now, wasn't it? Surprisingly, yeah, it was. Okay, let's uh, stop by the the weaponsmith. And let's uh, give a damage boost to everyone. And I guess I'm gonna go for... Brave Bark? Yeah, let's level up Brave Bark. I feel like Brave Bark will be better. And also the Sasquatch got plus 1 HP, nice. Now he has 11 HP instead of 10. Not too bad. Or did he? I don't know. Uh, I think it's 10 HP. He had, Yeah, he had 10 HP at level 2, so now he has 11. <sighs> Alright. Let's see, Morganok. What do you got? Are you gonna be a threat? Or are you gonna be easy? What's gonna be the case? Okay, I guess we're just gonna take care of this uh, Doggo first. We're still gonna do some splash damage to knock. Not a lot of damage though, we, we, we just broke his armor, which doesn't really matter. Okay, let's push him away. Push him up in here. Okay, come on, Ga. Ah, oh, almost. He was just one hex too far. I mean, it, it didn't really... It, it wouldn't have mattered if uh, he not got hit. It's, he still would have been uh, too low to do anything. Now we have to focus on the other enemies. Okay. Well, this guy got chunked. He got chunked. And now let's uh, focus on uh, the last aspect. We have to focus on more. The moment we get more low enough, we can just destroy whoever we, we want. We also have to worry about the enemies that he spawns, though. Hopefully we're gonna be able to kill uh, more first, but unfortunately that's not gonna be the case. Or is it? You'll, you'll see. You'll see who is gonna die first. Okay, this Warlock is still in hot pursuit, but it doesn't matter because we're just gonna smack you. And there we go. Now that this guy is dead, we can focus on uh, the other enemies. Unfortunately, we do have an... an um, an Asher of an Enchantress that we have to deal with, and as you know, Asher of an Enchantresses are very annoying. I mean, they're not as bad as um, some enemy, some of the other enemies, but they're still quite annoying. They're definitely up there. Okay, what do I want to do here? What do I want to do? Hmm. Yeah, I guess I'm just gonna move move back. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to get Brave recruited yet, so let's not do that. Okay, the Ashman Enchant has used her physical damage attack, so the Bombardier just tanked it because she does have some armor. She got enough armor to tank. And now we just have to get her out. Come on, Bombardier. We, we go, yeet. That's actually, the, I think, the first time that I've used the rocket jump, so yay. Yeet! And I'm out. And, I'm, and, and, and I haven't used this ability in so long that I even forgot that uh, it also... It also set, sets uh, the enemies that hits on fire, which is pretty nice, I guess. I mean, it, it's not great, but it's, it's definitely something. And I think it lasts for like two turns, maybe one. Nah, I think it's two. I think it sets them on fire for two turns. And yeah, this good. thankfully guy ended up hitting uh, this enchantress, so now she has a little bit of less HP. She's not fall she's not asleep though because. Just like the the warlock, she's uh, and the nightshade, they're immune to uh, sleep sleeping, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. As if the enemies can get any more annoying, now they can. Okay, smack you. Uh, the Sasquatch took a little bit of damage, but that's good. It's all good. It's all fine and dandy. Okay, guys, on one HP. Well, now he's at zero HP. And now we just have Knock. 
And Doc is probably the easiest one to avoid because you just have to stay two hexes away from him and he can't really attack you at all. So yeah, it's pretty easy to avoid him. Okay, Sasquatch, you gotta move. You gotta go. You gotta go. You gotta get out of here. Uh, I'm gonna put him here just to be sure. Okay, smack this tree trunk and we're fine. The only annoying part is going to be the the two enchantresses that we have. They're actually gonna be more annoying than Nokken, so which really says a lot about how easy this boss fight is. I mean, it, it can be more difficult depending on which aspect you kill first, but eh, I don't know. Okay, the, I'm not sure why I did what it what it, I'm not sure what why I I did what I just did there. That was definitely very stupid. I should not have done that because now we can hit. I just uh, I just allowed Nock to pretty much go get through all my units, and he does five damage when he's at the last if he is the last aspect standing. So it's not like he does nothing. Five damage is still a pretty decent amount of damage. Okay, Barry Bark, let's just do that. I know he I know that he's rooted now, but I don't really care. I just wanted to do damage. And eight physical damage is not bad. And thankfully he ends up spawning right next to Braveark. So now we're just gonna smack him. We're gonna smack this guy to bits. Okay. Come on. Let's finish you off. There we go. Okay. Not too bad. We got it. We ended up beating the entirety, man. The entirety of the, of the game with uh, this team. I'm impressed. Okay, I guess area damage is kind of OP, <laughs> not gonna lie. Okay, not too bad at all. Hmm, alright, that was uh, surprisingly good. So, in the end, the question must be answered. Can you beat the entirety of Legends of Kingdom Rush on normal with just area damage? The answer to that question is yes. Yes, you can, surprisingly. I mean, I was expecting this challenge to be doable, but... When I saw an interdimensional menace, I was really, really worried, but somehow we pulled through. Like, I'm so I'm impressed, to be honest. I'm gonna start paying more respect towards the Bombardier. She's not as bad as I thought. I, I thought that she was trash, but now that I've went through this challenge, she's actually kind of decent. Maybe I need to start using her more often, who knows? So, yeah, guys. Well, with that out of the way, that's gonna do it for uh, today's video. Thank you, everybody, so much for watching. I appreciate you for sticking around to the end. Subscribe if you want to see more of this content in the future. And while you're at it, drop a like on the video. It means a lot to me. And I will see you in the next video. Until it comes, that was King Rexy. Over. And out.